Hi all, let's see another amazing game from the Autobox Norway 2017 tournament. Vladimir Kramnik against Anish Giri. Knight f3 from Kramnik, d5, d4, knight f6. And now we see the Collie system. So e3, it hems in the bishop, but does it have any venom? It is popular at many uh, levels actually. So it's nice to see it at the very highest level in this tournament. e6 from black. So black also blocks in his c8 bishop, his queenside bishop. Bishop d3, c5. White just castles now. And usually in live book, chess based live book, there's a move like knight c6. And white might play b b3 like this and try and exert an influence over e5. So bishop b5, I know it's moving a piece twice, but this has been seen before, apparently. Uh, so anyway, in this position, black played c4. This is slightly unusual. It's releasing the tension, and it's also an undeminable target later with b3. But is it justified? Can it hem in this bishop? Can it put a clamp on e4? Sometimes in chess, you know, the generalizations uh, are okay, but you, you're playing in a concrete position. And here, after b5, it seems, you know, black's got a certain idea here. We have b3, though, undermining bishop b7. And now, usually in this position, it has been seen before. a4's been seen before here. Yeah? For example, like this. And it's thought to be about equal. Yeah, white plays to just simply swap off this bad piece. And it should be okay for white, actually. Uh, but here we see the unusual knight c3. I believe this took Anish Giri by surprise. Now b4 is played, knight a4. Maybe black could have considered just ignoring this provocative knight and playing uh, a6. For example, just supporting. Let's have a look. A6 might be a more conservative move. Sometimes when we play more ambitious moves, like we want to squish our opponent or whatever, we might uh, be creating weaknesses which could haunt us later. Is that the case here after B4? We see Knight A4, and there's ideas of A3 and maybe even C3. So black squashes white with c3 so that suppresses c3 from white but with these pawns on dark squares the adjacent light squares are slightly more vulnerable this bishop b5 check could be handy and in fact this next move knight e5 means bishop b5 check is to be taken seriously it's controlling some key light squares and it's a little tricky already even if black tries to extinguish now Bishop b5 with, say, a move like a6. I think white ends up slightly better here. White can undermine this structure, swap off the bad bishop, the collie bishop. And white is looking forward to a nice position, for example, like this, with b4. And this pawn is very loose. It's going to be going. White's better there. And uh, on queen c7, this might be the best move, actually. Check just to give up. This bishop, which is kind of hemmed in behind its structure as well. This might be the best way for white, uh, sorry, for black, to have played the position, say like this. It's very interesting. It can get hair raising. If white really wants to liberate the bishop like this, opening up the F file, it makes sense. These two pieces are activated. And there's some dynamic compensation here, which makes the position tricky for both sides. This is an example continuation. Although black might be slightly better, white hasn't got any dead pieces. So anyway, queen c7 might in fact be technically the best move here. But we see actually bishop d6. Now a3, a5, check. And it's really annoying. If black plays knight bd7, then knight c5 pounces, hitting b7 and d7. And this is very unpleasant, for example, taking Taking now threatening c6, say like this, this position where white is standing better. Another variation is king e7, and we could have e4 opening up the bishop and also potentially pinning up, pinning the knight. 
and this is very interesting this position here is very interesting because it's actually a tactical threat of queen h5 to exploit the pin and i'll give you an, a beautiful idea a uh, tactical idea now after h6 bishop h4 b takes queen h5 if black isn't careful here and plays rook f8 can you see what white could play in this position if i give you five seconds to pause the video white play i hope you can find it queen takes f7 this is one of the beautiful variations on the leaf this game if takes knight g6 is checkmate the bishop is controlling the escape squares <laughs> So this this is really dangerous, actually. This pin uh, probably uh, Black would have to play Queen G eight uh, to defend F seven, and actually White ends up just better. Collects that pawn on E four, and White ends up better. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, very interesting position. Uh, so King F eight is chosen. We see knight c5. Yeah, it looks as though things have gone slightly wrong for black. Queen b6, knight takes. Queen e2 is now played. Holding the bishop on b5. And with the idea of f3 and e4 coming up. Now here, black might have been actually still in the game here. It looks dangerous that the king's misplaced. And the rook, you know, is stuck. But maybe to give the rook activity with h5 is probably the way to play. I'll give you an example. f3, king g8, getting king off the f-file. e4, maybe we can even take this. Take on e5 and use that g4, which the h-pawn affords. This position might actually be okay. It's a slight advantage for white, but it's... Still a game. But in the game, actually, we have the move g6. And this seems to have a weakness of the last move, basically. These dark squares. It seems to be feeding e4. Maybe Anish Giri was tired. This is like round nine. Uh, but it seems e4 is very, very logical. And with bonus points now. Uh, so what to do about bishop h6 check? Is there time, even, to play a move like h5? In this position I think it's very dangerous now let's have a quick look h5 would stop bishop h6 actually it is very very dangerous knight takes e5 is better for white yeah this is just miles better things are dropping off so it's very very dangerous after this move on taking we can find the check first then take this position is uh, nice for white as well more than nice white's threatening things like coming in on the dark squares in fact black is a prisoner here on both sides of the board let's imagine this scenario where the f file and the dark square weaknesses and the imprisoned rook do not bode well to say the least yeah we, we're threatening things like this doesn't bode well so that's winning for white that kind of scenario Okay, so we have actually knight takes e4. We have check now. And king e7 is played. On There's another beautiful variation here on king g8. This is <laughs> a, not much oxygen for the king here. Knight g4. And all of a sudden there's a threat of queen takes and knight f6 mating. Just to show that queen takes and knight f6 would be checkmate. So black would have to do a move like this. Uh, and this position is just miles better after queen e5 threatening mate it's just winning again uh, we have nifty moves like even queen f6 here threatening now takes and it's immune of course to that chat mate yeah the dark squares are diabolical here if knight c6 yeah we just queen takes e7 <laughs> winning a piece so yeah, it's pretty diabolical uh, on King G8. That's just a way of getting mated, basically. 
Uh, so we have king e7, f3, knight d2. But now just rook f e1 with the threat of knight takes f7. Black dare not take this. It's just weakened on the light on the dark squares if he takes that. He plays king d8, uh, which okay for a moment seems to defend. But now after bishop f4, Giri's had enough of his position and wants to go home. The game ended here. There's a big threat of knight takes f7. Black's pieces are just uncoordinated. The knight's not doing anything there on d2 either. I'll give you an example continuation. King c7. White could take. And then could take on f7 using that pin. Well, it looks crushing after this and this. Yeah, there's a sort of king hunt going on here. As well as winning the rook. Yeah, it's it's been a totally disastrous collie system for Anish, Anish Guri, but may help popularise the collie on the bright side of collie fans. In fact, I mentioned the collie system just yesterday, in fact, as dangerous systems for white. I'll put a link uh, to my Cora answer in the description of the video because there are other dangerous systems like the Stonewall attack, uh, the Trompovsky. But yeah, I mentioned the Connie system as well. And it's funny that this game appeared in this super tournament, super GM tournament. So a crushing win there for Vladimir Kranik. So game ending, Bishop F4, just to recap the final position with, with gigantic threats. Yeah, if, if black doesn't do anything, you know, knight takes F7. You know, if rook F8, then knight takes F7 is hitting the bishop. This is just horrible. You know, this qu queen takes e6 now. It's, it's just so diabolical. Yeah, there's a pin there. It's, you can see it's totally diabolical in the game ending position. Okay, I hope you got something out of this one. Comments, questions, likes, shares, appreciated. Thanks so much.